The SD Macro system allows you to program almost any function or series of functions down to a single macro action. These macros can then be assigned to the work surface or keyboard for quick access. The programming of the macros is accessed via the system menu. The macro window that opens lists on all the macros contained within the session and contains a series of buttons that allow the creation, deletion and assignment of macros to the work surface. When you start a new session, this list will be empty. So let's create a macro and take a look at the macro editor. Pressing the new button opens up the macro editor. The macro editor window is split into four areas. The command type list down the left hand side is a list of virtually every channel type or section of the SD9. Once one of these is selected, the commands list at the bottom of the panel is populated with the commands associated with the selected command type. The horizontal grid section in the middle of the panel will contain the list of commands that we actually build into macros. And finally, the lower right-hand side of the panel contains the physical work surface assignment options for the macro. Probably the easiest way to introduce you to macro programming is to run through some examples and fill in the details as we go. There are a few commonly programmed macros, so let's start with those. We're going to program a macro as a save button, just to give us a work surface save session button. From the macro panel, press the new button. This will open the macro editor. First, we'll give the macro a name, save session. This is the name that will appear in the list of macros in the macro panel. Now we have to locate the save command and add it to our macro. In the list of command types, select filing. This then populates the commands list with all the macro commands for filing, loading session, saving session, etc. So in this case, we select the command save current session. This adds it to our macro command list. All we need to do now is assign this to a work surface button. So, in the editor, let's select macro button 8 by just touching button 8 on screen. We can now close the editor and test the macro. Pressing button 8 on the surface will save the current session. Looking at the work surface assignment options, we can assign the macros we build to the eight surface macro buttons, but there are a number of other options. The macro could be triggered from one of the incoming GPI connections. This could be triggered by an external foot switch. We could also assign the macro to an F key on the keyboard, or even to the previous or next snapshot buttons. In a similar way, Let's build a macro that enables us to tap the delay time for an internal delay effect. You'll need to make sure that the internal effects rack contains a delay effect and make a mental note of which effect it is. In my example, it's FX2. As before, from the previous macros panel, press the new button and give it a name. Tempo tap. Now, look down the command types list until you see FX. Select this. Now the commands list will reflect the available commands for the effects that exist in the current effects rack. It actually lists the commands in order, so starting with the first effect, the commands are preceded by FX01. Scroll down the list until you see the FX02 commands. These relate to the second effect, the delay. So to build the tap delay, we need to assign the tempo control from the second effect to a macro button. Select FX02 tempo and the command is inserted into the macro. If we close the editor, the macro is built, but not yet assigned to the surface. 
we can assign the macro from the macro panel. Press the assign button. Then we select on screen the macro that we are going to assign. In this case, the macro called tempo tap. Then we press the hardware button that we want to use. Macro button one, the macro panel will update and say M1 on. Lastly, we can close the editor and test the macro. Open the effects panel, tap the first macro button and the tempo control will follow. These two examples have given you basic press a button and something happens examples. But there are a few more options that provide more flexibility to your macro programming. In the macro editor, you may have noticed the capture button. Enabling capture puts the editor into listen mode and it records all your button presses and control adjustments. If you're not sure where to find the command you need, this can work as a quick way of getting going. If I put capture mode on and make some console adjustments, you'll see the list become populated. We then take capture mode off by pressing the capture button again. You can see in the list of commands that each aux muted, in this case auxes one through four, appears as a separate entry. While there's nothing wrong with this, we can tidy it up a bit. If we remove all but the first line of macro entry, we're left with just aux1 being muted. But the original captured programming muted auxes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Looking at the entry, there are two columns, from and to. These two columns define the range of channels that the command will act on. Touching them allows us to edit them. So if I touch the to column, I can use the value plus button to increment up to four. Now when I fire this macro, it will mute auxes one, two, three, and four. If we touch the value column, we can change the nature of the action performed. Instead of this macro muting the auxes, I can set it to toggle the mute state. So alternative presses of the macro will apply mute on, then mute off to the aux channels. Taking this one step further, we can make this programming a little more intelligent. Whenever a macro button is pressed, it performs what we call an on action. This is the first press of the macro button. The next press of the same macro performs an off action. Usually, we program these on and off actions to be the inverse of each other. So, instead of having alternative presses of the macro button just toggle the state of a controller, we can program the macro button so that the first press is a definite mute on command and the second press of the macro button is a definite mute off command. But what advantage does this give us? In our toggle the mute of four auxes example earlier, all the macro did was toggle the state of the mute. So if aux one had been muted and auxes two, three and four had been unmuted, firing the macro would have just toggled or inverted this state. If we actually wanted them all to be the same, then we have to split the actions up into the two states, put the mute on and take the mute off. We'll start a new macro and quickly build it to switch the channel mutes on for auxes one to four and assign it macro button two. Note that the action switch under the button assignments on screen is set to on. This means that when macro button two is pressed, it will perform the on action. That is to mute auxes one to four. We now need to build the corresponding off action. So we close the editor and from the macro panel, duplicate the macro we have just built. Press the duplicate button. Then select the macro to duplicate. The editor will open ready to edit the new duplicated macro. The macro is actually almost ready by default. It is assigned to the same macro button, but as an off action. All we need to do is change the action performed from on to off using the value plus and we're done.
When you fire these macros, you'll see that, regardless of the state of the orcs mutes, firing these macros will make them all the same and perform the required action. Ultimately, almost any of the console parameters or functions can be programmed to a macro. If you're not sure where to start, try to capture the function, but macros will save you time and give you immediate access to those commonly used functions.